recording? Yes. Well, actually, Chrissy. hi. She has a channel too. What's your channel? Pink Garnet Vintage and More. If you want to visit that. Yes. She does, gives a lot of tips and things about owning an antique mall and yes. a, having a booth. And about vintage stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty thick and fluffy, so. Thick and fluffy is good for an envelope. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I barely slept since we did those, so I can't tell you what it is. I don't remember. So. Well, it'll be a surprise. Yeah, that's the best part. Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and I am back with another video today. So I have my check from the Ten Pin Antique Mall, where I have currently three booths. However, this is the check for the previous month, where I only had two booths. So I actually did have a few sales from the new booth in this envelope, but I went ahead and removed them and recalculated the check amount so that I can keep all of that separate and a surprise. So uh, in about three weeks or so, I will do another video on my what sold in the antique booth and it will also include the 1950s booth. And that's where I will tell you exactly how much that booth made separately. So. I would actually like to do that with my other two booths and uh, I'm just trying to think of the best way to do that because currently I have the same tags like this with this uh, dealer number on them for both booths that I had before but I wanted to maybe make it more organized for myself so I know what's selling in each space and that way then I can figure out how I want to use each of the spaces separately uh, so that they're not just kind of overflow back and forth, move them. So I need to think about that. But I did sell a good amount for the month of March. I sold a total of $421.20 in the two spaces that I have. Uh, so that's pretty good. And I think it's actually better than last month if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. I believe it's still going to get better and better as the months get warmer and nicer outside. So we are off to a good start, I think, still. Uh, there is also a commission to be taken out of that, and that is $42.12, 10% of the total sales. And that covers somebody working the counter. It covers if somebody uses a credit card to check out. And then I guess that's about it, uh, because the customer pays the sales tax on the item. But pretty good, so that means I received a check for $379.08 for the two booths. I already removed the uh, the other tags. So I wanna keep that a secret. Okay, so 37808 in the bank for the month, pretty darn good. I will go ahead and tell you what I sold. Uh, I did sell a good number of salt and pepper shakers and some soap. I wanna say that I'm also trying to decide how much I wanna do with the soap going forward. I do buy soap wholesale online and then I put it in the booth and I have been doing that in hopes that it's bringing more people in the booth uh, with the sensory experience rather than just sight you get that smell so that was the intent and just to kind of diversify a little bit but I'm not really sure how well it's working because I mean like some don't sell some sell a lot quicker than others and then I if I want to get more from the company, I have to buy a big amount of it. And it's basically, I just keep getting more and more SKUs uh, of different soap scents and it's kind of becoming a problem. So I don't know. I need to think about that. They are selling, there goes the clock. They are selling and it's just, I don't know. We'll see. So let's get going. I sold a little five inch Eiffel Tower, figuring it was metal. It sold for about $4.95. $4 and then the soaps, I will go through right now and show you. I did sell four for 16, and then two for nine, two for nine, one for four, another two for nine, um, and then all the rest are singles. So I do also give a quantity discount if you get four. I prefer that you get four. I wanna sell them in volume because I generally make on the soap about $2 a bar, even at the four bar price, four bar amount. If you buy just one, I make a little bit more than $2, maybe almost three or so. So yeah, I do make more money that way, but it's one of those things where I wanna get them in and out so I can replenish them and get the appropriate sense for the season. 
So yeah, I need to look into that. I also sold a soap trivet. Now I don't, I can't get these soap trivets anymore. So there it is. I think I paid a dollar for that whenever I originally bought the soap. And I bought the soap so long ago, but I think I'm now just out of soap trivets. And so they took, they took a while. I think I had 10 to start with. So soap trivet. And then I sold a Victorian, well, 1960s style lamp, a 1960s Victorian style era lamp. So it kind of has that vibe for $12. And then there are two of my retro 1950s tags in this bunch, but that is because whenever I was doing the pricing, I only had those tags with me and I, they weren't appropriate for the 1950s booth. It was just, so anyways, there are doors, brown doors. They were $6 a piece I put on them. So these doors were actually the doors that were on a brown cabinet that I picked up and I don't remember where I got the cabinet. It's brown. And if you have an antique booth, you might realize that doors on things really just get in the way. So I pulled the doors off. I've been hanging on to them for a while and I'm just like, you know, I don't, I'm sick of holding on to these doors. So. I decided to price them. So I, anyway, they sold for $6 a piece, pretty darn good, I think. I also sold a teapot, a brown one for $3. Uh, juice reamer, I have like a whole stack of these juice reamers uh, for $5 it sold. And then a ball jar with a zinc lid, it sold for about $5. A funeral home fan, which is pretty cool. It's a paper type fan and it is in three parts, a center with the graphic and then they kind of pivot out with like a grommet or like a brad or something. So that was neat, it sold for about $6. The IGA Rooster Pitcher sold for $3. So I remember this one, it was in a big bundle of stuff, like a flat. I think I paid like maybe $20 for all this, I don't remember for sure. And that was one of the things in it. Actually, there was a couple of those little IGA pitchers. It had like a rooster on it, so it says. Poker set, $12. I don't remember what that poker set was, but it sold. And then an old wood handle masher, $5. So kitchen tools, they sell for me. Oh, there's the other rooster pitcher. There we go, $2.50 for that. A metal camel cigarette tin. That was actually, I think also, in that same flat of smalls. There were some uh, cigarette stuff, like three or four cigarette tins. So that one sold for $12. Aluminum juicer. Interesting, an aluminum one. I think I remember that one. So that one sold. A blown glass purple. Oh, I'm so happy. Ah. So this was a glass blown pitcher that, no, vase. It was a vase. Blown glass vase with like applied ruffles to it. Very nice, very heavy, big. I bought that on Facebook Marketplace for, I want to say, if it wasn't $5, it was no more than 10. I'm leaning more towards, I don't know. That's what I'm leaning towards. But it sold, luckily, I was so worried about it because it was something that I don't usually buy, especially not, and that's making me think I paid $10 then. So I think I paid $10 for this, I think. Well, it sold, and that is the point. So it sold, and that's great. I also sold an old sack, <laughs> 350. So I guess a sack in this case would have been maybe like a potato sack or uh, those brown, kinds and I have a love-hate relationship, mostly hate relationship with those because they disintegrate and as like you're holding them, they, like fibers are going everywhere. Oh, they're bad. So that sold. A metal, oh, a gumball machine sold $12. Where I bought that, I remember it was a yard sale maybe seven, six or seven months ago. And what else did I buy there? I bought a cowboy hat. I bought a, a stagecoach hat that for a dollar at that same sale and it sold, it was in a what sold video. It sold for like $120, that one hat. But here's the gumball machine. I think I paid 20, no, 50 cents for it. It's a just a gumball machine for 50 cents and it turned into 12, so that's very cool. A Bromwell sifter. I pick up sifters and I need to maybe cool it because I've got about five of them all in a pile in uh, booth number I'm gonna call it booth number three. Booth number two technically is the 50s booth. Booth number three is the new booth that I got that I moved everything from booth number two to booth number three, whatever. You don't hardly need to know that, but I've got a pile of them, so I need to stop. Sold for 
a milk glass footed pedestal dish. I've had that so long. I'm glad that it sold, but it was very cool and unique. Basically, it was like a milk glass bowl compote with a metal silver, silver, uh, well, silver color uh, thingy. Yeah, anyways, I, it, it was looks so nice on a vanity or something with like trinkets, really cool. A Caro syrup can, that sold for $8. Thought that was pretty cool. Why did I mark that down? I don't know. I mean, maybe I decided that 12 was too much. I don't know. Anyways, a ceramic strawberry pie cover dish, $8. That's cool. And I, um, that one, I don't know where I got it, but it was ceramic and it was basically a pie pan with a cover that had like a bunch of strawberries just all over it. So it was really cool and retro looking. That sold. A seaside, a sea, a sea themed bird wall art thing. So this was just like a thin, about quarter of an inch, half an inch wood thing, all wood. And it had a like seagull carved into it. And I've had that for a while. So I'm glad that sold $8. Uh, which kind of coincides with the fact that we're in Carlisle, Illinois for that booth, for that antique mall, I mean. And so that kind of seaside stuff sells. So that's a uh, set of three saucers, Johnson Bros. Put $3 on it because it was the saucers only, no cups. I don't remember what they even looked like. It could have, yeah, I don't know. So I, paid, I put $3 on it and it was probably something I got for free. A mini cobalt blue oil lamp, $6. I did pick up, oh, maybe three months ago or so at an auction, maybe a little bit more than that, four months. I went to an auction and they had a flat of oil lamps and I paid not much for the whole flat of them, maybe like between three and $5 for the whole flat. And there was probably 15, 20 oil lamps in it, miniature ones. So $6 for that one, pretty good. A pair of yellow duck figurines, six six dollars. These I think were I think they were left in figurines. They were yellow ducks and they were kind of uh, they were just figurines about that tall. And they finally sold. I think I've had them for over a year, just kind of in the wings around here, thinking that I was going to do something with them. And then I was like, no, he, Easter, spring, they need to sell, and they did. So that's great. An oil painting of a field, mountains, lake, and gold frame. That was very descriptive, I wrote, but I don't recall what that is. So it sold for $8. I did sell some books. That was actually one of the things that on my uh, things I don't buy video. So if you're curious about things that I just ignore, there's a video I put out. And then there's also a subsequent or opposite video of it, of things I do buy. So yes. I don't usually buy books, but if I can get them for free or next to nothing or bundled in whatever, I will obviously look them up and sell them. <laughs> so I did sell a couple books. Now this one is a hundred choice selections book. I don't know what that means. Sold for $2. And this other one is Masonic Digest, $5. I do remember that one because it had a really cool cover art to it, like the Masons. So that was neat. And then I did sell this, uh, the nation's capital book for $12. And that book, I believe was free, completely free. So that was cool. Um, oh, where are we at? Okay. So I did sell a pestle ricer. Uh, this is basically an aluminum thing. It's like a conical shape, kind of goes like this. And then they'll, ha it'll have a, a, uh, stand and then a wood also like a shaped like a cone with usually a round knob and it's about that top I don't know if you know what that means but that's about eight eight to ten inches tall this wood thing and you kind of it's, it's oh and the, and the conical thing itself is like a strainer in a way so you can rice and strain things through it juice whatever uh, so that's what that is and it's sold for fifteen dollars and it's just like a set um, but they many different companies West Bend um, just, well, that's all I can think of right now, but there are different companies that came out with those. It's sold for $15 and they usually go for somewhere between, yes, 15 and $25, depending on how cool they are. Some even have Bakelite handles, which I, I think are cool, more cooler, more cool, but so cool. <laughs>
Did I say cool? Yeah, it's cool. Okay, milk glass candle holder, $6. What that is, I don't know, but it sold. Green and gold with clear mini oil lamp. There we go, another one of those. Probably to the same person. $5 on that, very neat. And then I did sell some salt and pepper shakers. So I will go through those real quick. I sold a good number of them. And I like buying salt and pepper shakers if you are new to the game here, new to watching. <laughs> I buy salt and pepper shakers because they sell and because they're small, I can usually buy them pretty cheap. So here we are, a house with blue roof, salt and pepper, $3. I don't know what that is. Silver, what? Silver and cut glass, silver and cut glass, salt and pepper. I don't know what that means either. $3. Little brown birdies. <laughs> Well, I guess I was feeling playful. Little brown birdies, salt and pepper, $2. That's not very much. Salt and pepper wood shakers, $4. Easter chicks, salt and pepper, $4. And tropical birds, $3.95. So, interesting. I, I find that salt and peppers go for probably no more than $6 on average in the booth. Online, I can get more. It's just that some salt and peppers aren't worth even listing online because they probably well, they just won't sell. And if they do sell, it's most likely going to be what you could get in the booth. But some sell for more for me online rather than in the booth. It just depends on the subject and how old they are and all these other factors. But I do sell a good number in the booth. I've got quite a lot in there. So yeah, they do sell. I sold a gold desk lamp works. I put $12. I don't know what gold dust lamp is. It might be, it might be the one that kind of, uh, well, it would be the type that is kind of wider and you would put maybe a longer bulb in it and it's kind of has a square shape to it. Gold could be. So there's that. Uh, old wood cane, $3. So the canes and stuff, I do buy canes and yardsticks whenever I can get them cheaply. However, not often can I do that because whenever I'm at these auctions, they will sometimes sell them individually, especially if they have local advertising on them. People go bananas over these yardsticks, not so much the canes, but the yardsticks they do. And so the yardsticks and canes I sell together in a, just like a thing on the ground. So they're kind of like an umbrella stand situation. So they're in that. But anyways, a wood cane sold for $3. And like I said, I mean, maybe I paid less than a dollar for that. So Wexford three piece canister set with lids, $20. I do remember these, but I don't remember why I had them. I think, oh, I do remember. I was at an auction and there were those and something else, but the something else was why I was buying it, but I bought everything because I knew that I could make money in all the ways. So I think I paid maybe $2 and it sold for 20, very nice. This is just clear glass in the Wexford pattern. It's from like the 80s, 90s even, could be even up to date. I'm not sure if they're still in production, but it's a pretty popular pattern. Actually, currently in the booth, I have a Wexford covered cake plate, like covered the whole thing, pretty big. And I, I paid up for that at a yard sale because I figured that, and that was even prior to Christmas and all the holidays. So I bought that thinking that it was gonna sell and I paid like 10 bucks for it. And I think I have on it almost 30, like 28 or $30 on it. So not sure what that's about. I even put a pretty red bow on it for Christmas and nobody bought it. <laughs> so there's that. India boho style antiqued brass lantern with blue glass. My goodness, did I write a lot for that. Um, sold for $9.95. Why did I, st okay, so this was actually something that I owned and I bought new at Home Goods like five, six years ago. So, and I just got tired of it because it was just in the way and it wanted to sell it. So it sold for $9.95 and actually that's probably close to what I paid for it. Home Goods is one of those stores where they have really cool things and oftentimes high prices, high list prices, but then it's never really that price. So there's that. Very cool. I did sell a piece of furniture and furniture is one of those things I'd like to get into more. I feel like this is a very long video. Oh my gosh, this is a long video. 
Furniture is one of those things where I want to get into more, but it's a space problem. So it's nice when it sells. Not so nice when it just sits though. And that's the problem of reselling. You never know what, when things are going to sell. So anyways, this was actually a free, free table and it, it's, it's an oak table lamp with magazine wrap with magazine rack in the bottom of it. It was in a video like, I don't know, two months ago, month, month and a half ago or about two months ago. And I got it for free and I showed it in the video along with some other lamps that I picked up for free at this estate sale that was ran by like this one daughter who, the sale was really bad. Like there wasn't much there, lots of furniture. And she flat out said, and I think she had like an hour to go on the sale that, you know, all, all this is going to Goodwill, take what you want. So at that point I was just like, okay. Uh, the antique mall owner told me that magazine rack, are these, uh, these lamp table things, those combos they sell. Uh, so I was like, I'll just, I'll take a chance. So I loaded up the car with, those things and it sold. I did put $40 on it originally because I was unsure of the value. You know, I know the value of a lamp and I know the value of a like a good side table, but for the fact that it's like oak and this kind of, I want to say dated at this point, it's sort of a dated style, this kind of country thing, but there are still people out there that like that. And so I don't want to discount that idea too much in my head thinking that it's not going to be worth much so i did put like 39.95 on it with the help of the antique mall owner and what she thought and it's over 30. they asked me they sent me a facebook they sent me a facebook message and they said uh would you do 30 on it and i said yeah sure i'm really easy about stuff like that so anytime somebody wants in the booth you know that's my way of getting stuff in and out so i really would be it would be a rare occurrence if I wanted to hang on to anything for trying to milk a little bit more money out of it so that was good I did sell a Francoma vase for $14 and that was nice Francoma is one of those things that you know you hear everybody talking about you see them buying but it's kind of finicky for me I I try not to really go after it too much and it's not the first thing that I pounce on whenever I'm at a sale for sure but in this case, it sold for $14 and that's nice. Actually, that's it. So that was very good. And we are gonna tidy this video up just around 20 minutes long. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I will have another one in about three weeks to a month going over all three booths at that point, which that'll be interesting. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.